and to one of my favorite segments here on Business Edge, and it's Money Monday. Any way to get a little bit of extra money in your pocket, that's what we're here for. So today, let's talk building your retirement fund. Now, planning for your retirement can be a challenge, and there are multiple areas to think about, and you may not really have a clear idea of what you want retirement to look at. While putting it off, like many of us like to do, could be easier, you could also be missing out. Taking a proactive approach in the run-up to retirement can provide focus and possibly a little more money for those golden years. If you're at a loss about where to start with retirement planning, bringing the spotlight back to you should be your first step. And there's no single type of retirement that suits everyone. A key part of your planning should be about understanding what your ideal retirement looks like and building a fulfilling lifestyle once you stop work. Now, over the past last few decades, work would probably have played a very significant role in your life, and it can be a daunting step to move away from that and embrace the freedom that retirement offers. Tunji Andrews, the CEO of Awaba, joins me now to look at building your retirement fund and making this a little bit easier when it comes to the transition. Tunji, how are you? Welcome again to Business Edge. Uh, thank you for having me. It's great to always be here. So when we talk retirement, people tend to think you need to be, you know, a bit older to start this conversation about saving for your golden years. But when really is the right time? Is there even an actual right time to start planning for retirement? Um, I think the earliest you can possibly start. Um, so for me, I would say in your 20s, uh, because at least at the, that point, you can be able to save as little as possible because you have maybe 20, 30, 40 years to be able to plan for retirement. And it gives you a lot of time to be able to save little chunks and it grows into that big pool when you eventually do retire. So when we talk about having this retirement plan, think, people think it's just about having money in the bank, but there has to be some benefit. So why are we planning for retirement? Why are we planning for that time when there isn't that steady paycheck coming in, there isn't a nine to five, or you're even handing over maybe the business you've built to having other people take more uh, full on control of it? I mean, you want to look at people who you used to look up to while you were uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, now that you're an adult, you see that uh, a lot of them are not as mobile as they used to be. As great as they were in business, they're not as productive as they used to be because age catches up with all of us. So you want to think about the lifestyle you want to live at the point where age catches up with you. Do you want to uh, be living in the city? Do you want to live in the suburbs? Where exact? What quality of life do you want to live? Do you want to hop on planes? Do you want to live in a remote area? That is what should drive your retirement planning decisions. So it's not just cash in the bank. It's also the kind of place you want to live in. So if you want to live in the city, it would be very great for you to start planning towards a mortgage to buy out a property in the city. If you want to, you know, live in the suburbs, you might want to start from scratch, buy the land, grow it up. You know, so it's it's that conscious effort to plan 30 years in the future and to, you know, create that lifestyle you want to have at that particular time. So you've started all these questions, and I, I think you just went by them way too quickly. So questions as to where you want to live, what does this kind of retirement lifestyle look like to you? So help me narrow it down. Let's say the top three questions when it comes to starting this retirement fund. What questions should I be asking myself? What questions should I be asking my spouse? Because people also retire together. It's not just about retiring just for yourself. So what are your top three questions you think in terms of focusing this down and getting that retirement plan going? I think the first one, for, uh, I, I'll say for myself, the first one was my children's university education. I wanted a certain level of university education and I realized that um, it would cost a bit to be able to do that. And if it cost a bit, it, will it make sense for me to start planning now? My, ch my, uh, my oldest uh, is six. Uh, in about 10 years from now, he would be, you know, 10 years thereabout, he'll be going into the university. So do I you know, wait till then and hope that I have enough money to be able to pay for his university education? Or do I start planning now? That is one of those critical areas you want to start thinking about. Then you also want to think about the quality of health care that you'll be able to get. Do you want to get the kind of health care that is only in Nigeria? Do you want to be able to travel abroad if need be? That quality of healthcare is doesn't also come cheap, so you want to think about that holistically. And then the kind of food you want to live on. You know, I, I want to be able to live off the land when I do retire, and that means that I will not be uh, going to the grocery shops to be able to get my food. I want to be able to plant and be able to, you know, harvest and eat. And that is the kind of life you want to plan. So you want to plan uh, a, a farming lifestyle. So those kind of things are very, very um, nuanced and very detailed. But the problem is that because we live on a day-to-day -day 
earn, eat, earn, eat. We don't think that you know, 30 years is going to catch up with us. But like I told my, one of my friends 10 years ago, uh, sorry, 20 years ago, I said we were just turning um, uh, 30 at the time, that you know, we need to get to work because 40 is going to come quickly. Uh, by the way, 40 has come and gone, and <laughs> we're, we're waiting for the next decade to come around. So age does catch up with you, and you have to start planning quickly. So one of the things I'm hearing from you is that there has to be some numbers at play. So Tunji, how do we figure out how much we need to retire? So let's be honest, some of us are living lifestyles right now. They're a bit inflated. We could actually be living a much more austere lifestyle than we live. So if we're taking the numbers of how we're spending now, we might think we need this massive amount of money. But how do we figure out how much we really need for our retirement? Uh, there is a report that was put out about um, how much you need to retire in different parts of the world. And those, the report actually took into cognizance things like, you know, cost of living, you know, cost of accommodation, cost of health care, uh, and, and general those basic living costs that you need. And also taking into factor um, the, the, the average life expectancy in those particular places. In Nigeria, it put it uh, that we need about $300,000. Uh, to retire comfortably. I'm not sure many people have $300,000 in their bank accounts. And I'm talking about, you know, living the rest of your life without having to rely on anyone. You have to, you can pay your bills, you can take care of your uh, of income, your feeding, your hospital bills, every single thing. $300,000 is quite a lot of money. And if you are closer to retirement, you know that, you know, for you to be able to save up that kind of uh, war chest is going to take a lot from you. So it helps if you're in your 20s to start planning so that before you get to 50, you have more than that. And let's talk about the current economic situation. We can see how things are playing out. Inflation globally, also in many of our economies, food costs are up. So it means just everything is just that much more expensive. And when we look at this uh, current economic situation, it can make things very difficult because they say the hustle and the struggle are real. So how do you plan? How do you start saving for retirement? Or how do you continue saving? Is it even possible to take a break because of how uh, economically tight things could be at this point in time? I, I don't honestly think so. So um, I would go to, I'll go back to the conversation about um, my children's education. So uh, when I got married, there was one thing I significantly did. I sat down with a, um, a, a financial advisor, and one of the things we were able to do was to create an education savings plan for my kids. Uh, and it's a, a sort of insurance that if anything happens to me between now and the time they go to university, uh, the insurance company will continue to uh, save up to that war chest that I've created. But what we did was that we looked at the uh, 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 tuition fee of the school today and sort of looked at the average inflation rate and, you know, projected into the future, 10 years into the future. And we looked at it that and in 10 years into the future, if inflation continues to rise at this particular rate, it should be, the school fee should be at this particular rate at that time. And if you want to check it, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the Niger Nigerian Naira and the deflation and uh, de devaluation that happens every year, you come to a certain figure and you're able to say, okay, this is the amount we need to save towards then, taking into cognizance devaluation and inflation over that 10-year or 15-year period. So yes, you have to do a lot of planning, a, a lot of thinking goes into it. But if you want to get to retirement and be comfortable, it takes deliberate action. All right. And deliberate action is where we're going to wrap this conversation up very quickly. Tunji, your top three tips for getting it right with building your retirement fund. What are they? Uh, speak to a retirement uh, financial advisor. Um, that is the most critical one. Two is this, determine the kind of life you want to live when you retire. Most people are just you know, winging it and they want to get there and, you know, they don't know what they're going to get eventually. And at the end of the day, know who is going to be with you when you get there at retirement. Are you going to be with yourself alone or are you going to be with a, a spouse and family? That is going to determine the amount of money you're going to need at that particular time. All right, Sunji, thank you as always. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me.